Uh, yeah. Starting now po, sir. Hello, good afternoon, a blessed afternoon to everyone. It is time for our second webinar series. And of course, a um, few days from now, Christmas Day is approaching probably. Most of you are busy accomplishing um, various tasks before the Christmas break. Or perhaps some of you are preparing gifts for your loved ones and friends. But before that, of course, we have to do our engagement activity. We welcome you to our webinar this afternoon. We, please, we are pleased to welcome you all. And of course, my name is Ruel Paras, and I'll be your host for today's engagement. Before we start our webinar, once again, I would like to present our rules that we need to follow during the engagement. This webinar is recorded. The use of Q&A chat to ask questions is um, necessary. When asking questions, please introduce yourself and the institutions you represent. For the registration, if you have not yet registered, please register using the link. The information in the online registration form will be used to give you an account in DLSUD's learning management system. This will be the platform where you can access the webinar resources, give feedback, and your ear certificate. You will receive an email that contains your username and password. You, should on, you only need to register once to the entire webinar series. Now, to get your certificate, um, watch out for our access code that will be given before the end of the webinar. It will be shown both in the presentation and at the announcement. You have to log in at this link, go to courses, click enroll, input the access code. You can either one, go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module, or two, go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will, be automatic, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. To formally start today's webinar, let us have our opening prayer. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
Saint John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much once again good afternoon to everyone it is a fine wednesday afternoon here in das marinas and we are so grateful to welcome you all to our webinar entitled online module planning and preparation as part of our academic collaboration with the commission on higher education this learning engagement is brought to us by de la salle university das marinas office of the vice chancellor for academics and research through the faculty training and engagement committee and now to give his message, let us welcome the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research of De La Salle University Das Barinas, Dr. Marco Sáez. Thank you, Roel. Good afternoon to all of you. Um, we're happy to report that we are close to 500 registrants as of today. It's exactly 72 right now who's attending and hopefully uh, you'll be advising your friends to join us now since we are holding uh, the second of the uh, webinar series that we're having. I'm also glad to uh, to tell you that um, the learning management system in which you are enrolled in has features which you can use for chatting or if you want to send a message directly to Marco Polo who received a very wonderful um, evaluation from you. Uh, you can actually do that as well. The feature would also allow you to come up with forums or even post your own messages uh, on the board. So please feel free to explore as you will also be learning uh, based on, on that, uh, that approach. Um, when I was reading the evaluation, one word that uh, I guess uh, figure in prominently, figured in prominently in the evaluation as a takeaway is, is care. Uh, and we're happy to find to, to know that since that's ulti that ultimately is the message that we would like to to draw to, to give to you during that time. But let me just uh, uh, hopefully uh, clarify that um, the care model is something which you can localize. Uh, you don't need to uh, copy it uh, down to the last detail as it would work best if it's suited based on your own context and your own situations. So hopefully um, as you we go through this webinar, you would come up with your own with uh, care as a principal foundation. Um, today, we'll be talking about online modules and planning for it. The pandemic has given us so many opportunities to define or redefine what a module is. And hopefully, today's webinar would allow us to be introduced with those various perspectives and choose the one that will work best for us. Um, hopefully, uh, we would be able to again uh, uh, collaborate uh, for the rest of the series until the end. 
So see you. Uh, see you soon. Um, thank you again for coming and Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you very much, Sir Marco. Maraming salamat po. This online engagement will not be possible and successful without the support and cooperation of our dear administrators, faculty, and staff members from our participating schools and organizations. And now let us acknowledge our participating schools, state and city colleges and universities, private higher education institution and other organization. Let us have a quick roll call of our participating schools based on our registration as of this morning, December 16, 2020. So we would like to welcome our participating schools and organization. We'd like to welcome Abra State Institute of Science and Technology, Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies, Adventist University of the Philippines, Asian Institute of Science and Technology, Das Marinas, Arnold Jensen Catholic Mission Foundation Incorporated, Balubad Elementary School, Bagong Buhay Elementary School, Batanga State University, Bulacan State University, Bulihan Integrated National High School, Kalamba Doctors College, Capiz State University, Caritas Don Bosco School, Cavite State University, City College of Tagaytay, Colegio de Montindupa. Coleo de San Agustin Makati, DCAP Wisdom Christian School, De La Salle College of St. Benil, De La Salle Lipa, De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute, De La Salle University Das Marinas, Divine Word College of Ordaneta, DMMCIHS Institute of Health Sciences, we have Don Bosco Technical College, Mandaluyong, Pilamar Christian University, Rojas Capis, La Consolacion College, Bacolod, Laguna State Polytechnic University, Lalaan Central School, Silang, Cavite, Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite, Madalag National High School, Aklan, Madre Guidita, Martelli School Incorporated, Silang, Cavite, Manila Adventist College, Marymount Academy of Paranaque, Marvelous State Academy of Bacoor, Mindoro College of Agriculture and Technology, Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, National University, National College of Science and Technology, Occidental Mindoro State College, Rizal College of Taal, Batangas, San Juan de Dios Educational Foundation Incorporated, San Sebastian College, Recoletos, Cavite City, St. Jude College, Das Marinas, Santa Cruz uh, Elementary School, Das Marinas City, Santa Isabel College, Manila, St. Anthony de Carmeli Academy Incorporated, University of Negros Occidental Baholod, University of Perpetual Health System Molino, University of the Colerias Baguio City, and of course, Bicol University, Isabella State University, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Open University System, Sister of Mary of, Sister of, Mary of Benux Incorporated, Surigao del Sur State University, UPHR, Dr. Jose G. Tamayo Medical University. We have MOL Magsaysay Maritime Academy and Mark Blue Spate Academy of Bacor. Special thanks to DepEd Cavite, the Department of Education, and of course to the Commission on Higher Education. So we would like to welcome everyone once again. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And at this point, to introduce our resource speaker, let us welcome Dr. Grace Sela Armia, the Chair of the Risk Management Department, to introduce our resource speaker. Ms. Grace? Hello, Ms. Grace? Thank you, Mr. Lowell. Can you please hear go. me? Yes, please go ahead, Ms. Grace. Good afternoon. Hello. Mr. Lowell? Yeah, please go. Please proceed. Yes, uh, thank you all so well. Good afternoon and good afternoon, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. We are to become a woman on our platform of working at the Tower University of Marinas. She has a PhD degree in curriculum and instruction from the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies in Silang, Cavite. Our speaker finished her Master of Arts in Education from Concordia College in Manila and holds a postgraduate diploma course in teaching English to speakers of other languages from Simeo RELC in Singapore. 
She is a graduate of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in Education, major in English from the Philippine Normal University. Our speaker has authored and co-authored English books for elementary, high school, college, and graduate students. She is into research, training, and speakership related to curriculum and instruction. On top of it all, she is a proud mom of a very good looking and smart boy named Vaughn. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our resource speaker this afternoon, Dr. Evelyn Resurrection Obo. Hello, po. good afternoon to everyone. It is indeed uh, a great honor for me. It's a privilege that I am given this opportunity to be able to talk about something that is very interesting, that is very timely, uh, that is that has caused a lot of issues, particularly at the beginning of uh, the pandemic in March. Uh, I really hope and pray, as I was praying last night until this morning, that I will be able to share something to each and every one, because I believe so. This is one common problem of almost all schools, not only in the Philippines, but I guess all over the world, and that is development of modules, simply because as what our Vicar said a while ago, the module has been given a lot of definitions, a lot of descriptions since the, pan since the pandemic came in. So let me share my screen with all of you. All right. Uh, can you see my screen now, sir, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. So when I was asked uh, about this particular talk, I think more than a month ago, I was nervous at the back of my mind. I, I prayed so hard that I would be able to give you what you really needed from me. So I tried to make it very simple. I tried to consolidate all the ways as to how other schools that I've contacted prepare their module. And at the end of my talk, I will also be sharing with you how we did it in accordance with our care model, uh, institutional uh, policies and guidelines. So the objectives of this particular uh, webinar is to review, because I am sure we all have our idea as to how we are going to prepare modules, because even in the undergrad, especially those who took education, uh, we had an understanding, we experienced preparing modules. It was one of the most taxing parts in my life when I was studying. Uh, sleepless nights were there, I could clearly recall. It was during the mid of 1990s when I prepared the very first module in one of my subjects in the undergrad. And my classmates and I were sharing that we never enjoyed doing it because it's something that's very rigorous. But today, let us try to go back to that rigorous process. Let us try to review and gain understanding about module planning and preparation. And I will be sharing with you how modules are prepared here at De La Salle University, this Marinas. But before I formally begin, I'd like to give the floor to Sir, Ron Sir Roland. Sir? Sir Ruben? Hello. Good afternoon. Yes. Maganda hapon, bagnang tipa. <laughs> Ayan, so this activity, we are playing. Ayan, okay, so that's why we, we asked you earlier to download the app on your smartphone. But you can also join us through your, with your laptop through the browser. Okay, now let me share my screen with you. And let's start playing Kahoot. Or here, yeah, yeah. I'm sure every some of you have already played this one. Okay, now, okay. So this is Kahoot. 
for those joining with us with our laptops, go to the browser and uh, type in kahoot.it and type in the game pin. So that's all you need to do. For those who have already downloaded the mobile app on their smartphone, just open the app and type in the game pin. And then you will be asked to, you know, write your name. You can write a nickname or an alias, I don't know, whatever. If you're with a group, you can also join us, join as a group. Okay, and some tips before we start the game. Uh, the, if you know the answer, click immediately. Okay, those who click first will get the highest point. So don't wait for the timer to run out. Just click and click. After every question, there will be a leaderboard that you will know where you stand. Okay, I prepared eight questions and those questions is all about this afternoon's topic, modules. And the question, the eight questions is, uh, we, we have a multiple choice, but don't worry about uh, the questions. There are no essays. So multiple choice is true or false. And there's also a puzzle. There, for those who are new to Kahoot, you can play Kahoot in your class. You just go to kahoot.com. It's easy to create an account. Use uh, any email account. You can even use your Facebook account to create your Kahoot account. And then you can start creating classes. For the first timers, don't worry about uh, what, to, what game to create. There are lots of templates that you can use as a starter. There, so now we have 12 players. So I've heard that we have 72 attendees or more than 72 attendees. So let's wait for them. Maybe we don't have to wait for all 72. Let's see. So we have now 14 players. Yeah. So if you are with your classmates, you can... Uh, Join as a group so that you can help each other and get a higher score. So don't forget, if you know the answer, click immediately. So there, so, oh, we have happy nicknames, the happy elephant. Daring ant. <laughs> Diligent hen, uh, wow, glowing hair. Okay, so I have 18 players now. Royal Eagle. Okay, keep it coming, keep it coming. Cute gecko, a charming frog. <laughs> so also with Kahoot, you, the, you can, uh, there's a prompt that will, uh, you know, uh, tell you to choose nicknames. Yeah. They have glowing hair, blue wombat, cute bear, yeah, and Pascong Pasco, a cute bear. <laughs> okay, so we will 2630. Okay, so we will start with 30 participants. So the rest who are not able to join in, you can uh, sit with your sit mate and uh, play as a duo or a team so we have 26 we'll wait for four more 
and then we'll see. So in, in playing games in uh, Kahoot in the classroom, uh, our, our challenge is the internet connection. So that's why what we did before was uh, a group game. So uh, for example, I have 40 students and then group them. Uh, we have five groups. So, so there are only five cell phones are connected to the game. So with only five cell phones, so we have better connection. So the more players, then the, the more challenging it is for our connection. So we have 27, so five, four, three, two, one, start. First question, a resource speaker for this afternoon's webinar. Okay, this is only for 20 seconds. We have six answers. One, ta -da! only six players were able to cast in their answers and five of them got it. Correct. May pumili ng Sharon Coneta. Wow, talaga naman. Congratulations to our five players. Let's move on to the next question. So, for our leaderboard, our top player is Glowing Echidna. Anong klaseng animal tong Echidna? Anyway, okay. So, let's move on to the next question. So, multiple choice. Quiz. Oh, we got faster answers now. That's good. That's good. Keep it coming. So we have 28 players here. So, four, three, two, one. Okay. So, that's our result. Five got it correct. Six. Three and two. Oh, sorry for that. So a module has learning objectives, which influences the choice of topics, activities, and assessments. So learning objects is our cue. And okay, let's look at our leaderboard. Glowing, it should nice still on top. Yes. And then there we have Smart Mouse, Rational Sphinx. Oh, he, he or she was not there. Earlier, pero yan, tingnan mo, ang bilis ng uh, akyat niya. Happy Elephant and Speedy Cat. So, so sorry for the rest of the players. We only show the top five. Well, let's move on to the next question. Okay, in 1956, Bloom and his collaborators published a framework for categorizing educational goals. What is his first name? And see Mr. Bloom. Okay, we have five seconds. So 13 answers. One and Bloom. Okay, his first name is Benjamin Bloom. And see Orlando Bloom ay isang artistang Americano. Leopold Bloom is a fictional character. And Rachel Bloom... Artist pa din yata to. Kalimutan ko na. Anyways, congratulations for all those who got it correct. Eight players got it correct. Tingnan natin si Glowing Ichidna still on top. Still on top. And we have here Happy Elephant. Streak of three. Umaapoy si Happy Elephant. And Radiant Dingo. Okay, welcome Radiant Dingo sa top five. Here's our next question. This is the fourth, nangalahati na tayo. It's a puzzle. So you have to arrange it from left to right. Okay? Arrange the elements in a typical module format from left to right. So move, hold, and drag. Drag the, the boxes. What you see on your phone, drag it. Starting from the left to the right. Okay? Oh, I only have... got. I only got six answers, so baka nahihirapan mag-drag yung iba. Pero I got 
Ayan. So the correct order is, so typical module format starts with the learning objectives followed by motivation, discussion, and the last is assessment. Tingnan natin si Glowing Ichidna kung siya pa rin ang number one. Yes? Yes, siya pa rin with 3,511 points. Sino kaya ito si Glowing Ichidna na to? And Happy Elephant is still hotly streaking. Ayan, and we still have our top five, Radiant Dingo. Number five, ingat, baka mawala sa number five. Next question, true or false? Ayan, madali lang to. Assessments are the knowledge outcomes of the module. Yeah, 15 seconds. Ayan, ito, mas mabilis, true or false lang naman to. Eh. So 10 answers. Ayan, pabilisan talaga to. Sorry, hindi ko kayo binigyan ng isang minuto. Ayan, 14 answers, 11 got it correct. Galing, galing. So, assessments are the knowledge outcomes of the module. So, doon natin malalaman ngayon kung na-achieve natin yung outcomes natin. Papaliwanag yan ni Ma'am Beng later. Next are, wow, glowing. Oh, glowing itchid na. Bumaba sa second place. Kahit na tama siguro sagot niya, pero nahuli siya. Nauna si Smart Mouse. Talaga naman ng Smart Mouse nauna. Rajan Dingo, still number five. Diyan ka lang, huwag kang umalis dyan. And number six question, still a puzzle. So sa puzzle, from left to right ang ating sequence. So arrange the elements in Bloom's taxonomy for e-learning from left to right, starting with the highest. And from left to right, starting with the highest. And okay, yeah. three answers, four seconds left. Two, one. Okay, so sorry for that. Maybe we need more time for puzzle questions. But the, here is the correct order. First is create, evaluate, apply, and the lowest is remember. Ayan ang Bloom's taxonomy for e-learning. Let's look at our leaderboard. Smart mouse is streaking hot. Ayan, nandun na siya. Hindi na, hindi na umalis. Talaga, smart na smart si smart mouse. We're down to our last two questions. Let's go to our seventh question. This is a quiz. What is a common module length? Ano ba kahaba ang isang module dapat? A year, a week, a day, or a month? Ayan, ayan, mas mabilis. So, yun, so paggawa ng question, pagbigay ng timer, siguro nga mas mahaba para sa puzzle. Ayan, okay, zero. So, anong tamang sagot? A week. Ayan, so ang isang module dapat isang linggo siya. Ayan, papaliwanag yan ni Ma'am Beng mamaya. You ask her later, bakit isang linggo? Okay, let's look at our leaderboard. And smart mouse, still looking very smart. Five, with 5,851 points. So steady yung ating top five. Ha? Tingnan natin kung may makapasok pang iba. Galing is smart. Mouse streak with seven correct answers in a row. Ayan na. Last question. Who evaluates the first draft of the module? Students, parents, teachers, or subject matter experts? Ayan. Ayan na. Okay, seven seconds. Sino ba talaga ang mag-evaluate ng first draft? And one. Boom! What's the correct answer? Subject matter experts. Ayan. Mamamaya, ipapaliwanag yan ni Ma'am Beng. So, seven. Maraming sumagot ng parents. First draft pa lang po to. So, siguro sa final draft. I don't know. Tingnan natin kung sino ba talaga ang mag-evaluate. Pero sa first draft, subject matter experts. And let's look at our leaderboard. Tingnan natin kung sino ang nanalo sa Kahoot game na to. Here is our podium. Ta -da 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 -da. Happy Elephant comes in third. Six out of eight. Followed by Glowing Ichidna and a winner. Smart Mouse. Galing. Talaga naman. 
Runners up, Rational and Radiant Dingo. Ayun, nandun sila. So, congratulations, Smart Mouse. Siguro maganda mamaya kung magpapakilala ka. <laughs> Ayan, so maraming salamat po sa pagsali, pagdalo sa ating uh, Kahoot Games on Modules. Ayan. Ayan, thank you so much. Uh... Sir Ruben, so I think I will have to go back and share my screen again. Share ko po. Ayan. So, thank you so much again, Sir Ruben. Uh, we enjoyed it. Sana po we could uh, meet later on the winner in the Kahoot games that we did. So, Dito na po tayo. Okay, so the match awaited topic, module or modules. So sabi nga, the usual definition of a module, this is a learning content item designed to teach a specific topic or skill. So learning content designed to teach a specific topic or skill. Everybody, I'm sure we all agree. This is it. That's a module. So a module can be defined as a unit, chapter, topic, or segment of instruction. It is a standard unit of or instructional section of a course that is self-contained chunk of instruction. Self-contained chunk of instruction. We understand that. That means it is just the learner and the module. Learner and module. Now, fast. Let's have it in the situation where we are right now, especially whenever we open our SOC Med and we see parents in the elementary and in the high school. And they're saying that it's very difficult for them. Other parents could not go, could not do their usual work because they would have to stay with their children answering the modules. There are a lot of memes that we see on it. Parents are having difficulty answering the module. There are a lot of memes. Congratulations, Mr. Cruz, for being the first during the first quarter, uh, for being top one during the first quarter. So it's self-contained. Maybe I will agree if the module will be from preschool until grade three. So there has to be guidance, but not necessarily the mother or the father or the older sister, or there has to be a tutor to sit with the kid because it should serve its purpose. So in the Kahoot game, we say a week is a common module length. A week is a common module length. Based on studies conducted, usually modules would run for one week, but it can be shorter or longer depending upon content and teaching style. So it totally depends upon you, but the common length would be for one week. From the very beginning, from the discussion, until the assessment. It should be a common one week for the length of every module. The module contains different ways of instruction, such as informational online course, quiz or assessment, video tutorial, point and click interaction or demonstration. So meaning module in itself i remember one very good friend dr baliena it's not powerpoint presentation powerpoint presentation may be part of it but it's not the whole thing it should be composed of several parts so modules offer a variety of content types which allow educators to create a richer and a more robust learning and or training experiences for learners. Meaning, it has a lot of things inside it. It's a complete package to give students the needed competencies that they needed to get as if they were inside a classroom or inside a training room. So you begin with 
everything that is in there, it's a combination of so many things. There is there there are quizzes like what we are what we are using in our learning management system. So quizzes and assessments we upload it at the school book. And then we have our discussion. It could be in a PowerPoint presentation. I'm speaking on behalf of myself, so it could be PowerPoint presentation that I prepare, which is interactive. There are activities inside the PowerPoint presentation that I use. There are uh, other activities that go with it. Sometimes I upload PDF formats of additional readings or word format for other readings. And then sometimes I even record discussion. I remember when I gave, I will be showing you a sample of a short discussion that I did. It was a 10 minute discussion as I was inspired by a study that I read. Uh, that particular study said that students would still prefer that they see their teacher talk on screen or they see their teacher in a video trying to discuss a concept rather than merely looking at the modules or merely reading it. So there are really some students who may be different. So multiple intelligences, multiple ways of understanding a particular concept. So you could add a discussion, not necessarily every time because it will be taxing for any educator or for any teacher to come up with discussion or video recorded discussion because it's not easy. So when I did my discussion before, uh, when I when I did the, the, that particular module that went with that particular video discussion, uh, one one of my colleagues sent a message to me when I was presenting this uh, this particular topic to our uh, co-faculty at De La Salle. She said, "Bang." It's very difficult. How am I going to do it? Because I am not really good at editing. I am not good at doing this video. Yeah, I agree. But it does not necessarily to not does not necessarily have to be something that's very professional. It's expected that we are not computer experts. We may not be good at editing. So if we can ask help from our kids, from uh, I asked help from my uh, adopted son to do the video. So I had a 10 minute video of the discussion of the concept. And when when it was presented, I, I tried to ask my student, how was it when that particular module or when modules are coupled with video recorded discussions? And most of them would say, we feel happy that we are watching videos, that th these videos are explaining the difficult concepts within uh, the module. So that means that it does not, as I've said a while ago, it does not necessarily have to be every week that you will be preparing modules, but you can prepare it once in a while when there are difficult concepts. So you can video record yourself. When I did the video that I will be showing you a while ago, I was just using my phone. So I recorded it using my phone and then I just asked help to edit it. So if you're saying that, wow, that would be very difficult for, for us with the many things that we need to check and everything, if we will still be doing the video recording, that would be an added burden. No, not necessarily. It's just probably a part of it and maybe you can try it for experience. And then, uh, as I have said, with when you use modules, there are a lot of content types which will help you make learning and the experiences of your learners very robust and very interesting. So the learning modules has two sides, so two sides. First one, one that speaks in the language of teacher professional talk. So learning designs can be shared with a fellow colleague. So that's one side of the module. Remember, po, when whenever there are in the elementary and high school, there are publishing houses that offer books with teachers copy. So when you're designing a module, you can design a module that would be for you as a teacher for your use, something that you can share with your colleague. Uh, it's designed for you. So that's one. The language that you use is, of course, language fitted for you. And the other side of the module is the, that speaks directly to the learners in the language of the classroom. This is what we are designing intended for our students. That sometimes we are creative enough to put characters that, hi, 
we are going to blah, blah, blah. Our objectives for today, you have to blah, blah, blah. You put your objectives and then come on, let's begin and play. So that's for your motivation. And then for your discussion, say, OK, here. So you have your character, your image. Come on, let's try to discuss and understand. And then you go with your discussion. I will be giving you a sample of how I did it at the college level. So the language of the module is speaking for the students so that learners can access a learning module and take a relatively autonomous role in their learning. In one of the studies conducted, it says there that if you're using that particular language, the students or the learners feel comfortable because it's as if this particular module is speaking to me and the mind of the student is thinking that the teacher is the one talking to the student while answering the assessments and activities in the module. So that's the reason why there are two sides of the module. So the module is made up of the following parts. So these are the parts of the module. So first, the learning focus. This is the curriculum area and the learning level. So what is the level? To whom are you preparing the modules for? So you intend this module for elementary, for high school, for senior high, for college, uh, for graduate school. So you have to know the focus. Focus is what's the curriculum, the, the, level, the language, of course, it, it contains the language. What language are you use? Are you going to use? The contents of the lessons that you will be putting in there. So that should be the curriculum area and the learning level. And then the second is knowledge objectives. These are the intended learning outcomes and links to mandated standards. Intended learning. What do you want your students to learn? What competencies would you like your students to get? But of course, as you prepare your objectives after considering Bloom's taxonomy, higher order thinking skills or lower order thinking skills, the first thing that you have to think about would be what are the mandated standards? So what should be expected from the students that they will be getting from this particular module or from the modules? So like for us at De La Salle University, we have the teaching learning objectives or teaching learning outcomes, and we have the course learning outcomes. So we try to differentiate it so that students would know, ah, okay, so this is for outcomes intended for our course. This is for the teaching learning outcomes that we are expecting from our professor or from this particular subject. The third one is the knowledge processes. These are activities marked up for the kind of knowledge making required of the learner. This is or these are sequenced appropriately and with a range that accommodates learner diversity. So never ever forget to consider the diversity of our learners. Our learners may not be able to understand some very difficult things. That's why in the activities that you're going to prepare, you really have to be ready and prepared when you do it. If I may suggest as what I got from the reading, when you prepare activities, it has to be in a manner that begins from easy, uh, average, difficult or more difficult so that we are giving way to our students to be able to answer understand it. So I remember when I prepared a module intended for elementary, I started with I am a, an English teacher, so I, I was uh, preparing a module for language at that time. I think it was uh, the use of uh, verbs, uh, past tense of the verbs. So I, I tried to prepare activities that are uh, easy, like they will just be using the uh, putting D or ED. These are for the students that may not be able to automatically grasp a particular concept on the use of the past tense of the verbs. So I put just using D or ED and then for an average round, I also prepared. OK, you're going to identify it in a particular sentence. You're going to identify the the, the verbs used or you're going to to make the verbs to convert the verbs into past tense. So that's an average. And then for the difficult would be asking students to write an experience wherein everything will be coming from them and they will be using the past tense of the verb. So the activities that are there 
in the modules is something that would make students understand little by little and would cater to all students in a particular class. I, 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 you have to be very careful also. I'm sharing my experience because for the first time, I was asked to prepare this term, uh, this first semester, to prepare module intended for graduate students and they are Chinese students and I prepared modules for them. So when I prepared the modules, the, the only thing that I had in mind was their PhD students. So they know many things already. They are built with so much experiences because the first week when I opened, uh, when I opened the school book, I was checking on their self introduction because I would always ask my students at our forum, forum feature of our school book to introduce themselves with a guide as to how they're going to, uh, what, what they're going to put in there. And I really wanted to know their background. And most of them said they're administrators of a, of a particular university, of a particular school. So that particular week, before the regular class, I told myself, wow, I really have a group of very good students. So I made the necessary adjustments for the activities in the modules that I prepared. So I make it one step higher than what I prepared. Lo and behold, to my surprise, when I faced my students already during the first meeting, it was totally very difficult for me because there's language barrier. Like, 50% of my students can talk, express themselves in English, but 50% of the students would have difficulty understanding the words that I put in there and the activities. So it's something that like, wow, these are things that you need to be prepared for. Good thing, this is not the first time that I'm teaching the subject. There are a lot of, I am also teaching in the undergrad. So I have ready materials in my laptop that I could automatically replace the activities that I had there in the modules that they have. So automatically it was a total change of plan. We begin from the simplest going to the highest level. So next. Knowledge outcomes. OK, this a, a lot had the wrong answer at the Kahoot. Yeah, knowledge outcomes. These are assessment processes. This is the knowledge outcomes are the assessments, the results of how students learn. That's according to Sir Ruben. He was right when he said that the, the knowledge outcomes, the outcomes of the modules would would be seen in the assessments, in the result of the assessments that our students would be answering. So there are two types of assessment. We have formative and summative assessment, but I think there is a memo or a policy that says that formative assessments are not uh, supposed to be graded and are not supposed to be recorded. They're just formative assessments. So we put it in a different different umbrella at De La Salle's because all our formative assessments, we call it enabling assessments because we are grading our students every time they answer uh, enabling assessments. All activities that we do in class, we ask, we check it, we rate it, we record it, and it's part of their grade uh, at the end or at uh, during the midterm and during the final term. So knowledge outcomes are assessments and then learning pathways. These are recommended follow up on activities such as other learning modules or such as assignments. So these are the follow up modules, uh, activities. These are the learning pathways. If we want to intensify or strengthen what the what competencies our students got from the modules that we have prepared or from the module that we have prepared on a particular topic. So always remember, be mindful that the first steps are more about the preparation work rather than the process of creating modules. This is one thing that we were not able to prepare when the pandemic starts. We have an idea of what module is. Everybody, all of us, all educators, we know we have that huge understanding of what a module is, but the pandemic distorted our knowledge of a module. It's a lot of preparation. It's not as easy as we think it is. When I was writing my journal, I said, when I was doing the module, 
when we were asked to do the module in the undergrad, I guess I enjoy doing it. But doing the module at this point in time, you know how to do it, but it seems you do not know how you're going to do it simply because there are a lot of considerations that you have at the back of your heads. What are these considerations? We're used to preparing modules and we're used to using this module inside the classroom at our guidance. But this time, that particular knowledge and understanding that the module has to stand alone, that the learner would have to navigate and do it all by himself or herself is a very big question. Why? Because there is no sample for our situation. This is all our first time to experience this. That's why I'd like to congratulate all of us because at the end of this pandemic, I guess all educators at this point in time, whoever experienced the very difficult and rigorous process of the educational system at this time, we're one or we are one of the best. This is very challenging. And all of us standing at this point in time, and as, as I, I, I said, this is nine months already and we are still learning how to prepare modules. Why? Because we are all so unsure of ourselves. Even myself, am I doing the right thing? Even if in my own checklist, did I do the objectives following the mandates? the mandates of our school, the mandate of the Commission on Higher Education. Did I consider, I, I say yes, I'm thinking all yes at the back of my mind, all these yeses, but I still have doubts. Am I doing the right thing? And when I look at my seatmates, I am confused. Are they doing the right thing? Because mostly when I conducted some interview, they're thinking and associating modules with so many things. They associate it with mere PowerPoint presentation, uploading it, and that's it. That's the module. But actually, the module this time is really something that we need to understand and we need to know how to prepare well. It needs time. And our challenge, we were never given enough time to prepare it. But at this point in time, we are given all chances and opportunities to correct the mistakes that we did in the past. So we do it right this time. The difficulty, the challenge, the fear, the nervousness that you're feeling at the moment, they are the key to starting to move in the right direction. The desire for each and every one of us to be here in this room to learn how we're going to do it, how we how we are going to better what we have prepared for our students is a very beautiful start heading towards the right direction. I pray I will be able to bring you to the right direction. <laughs> OK, so let us do it step by step. Number one, step one. Decide on what you want your students to learn. What do you want them to get from you, from the module that you will be doing? Or go back to the module that you have prepared. Check it. Is this what you want your students to learn? What your students need to learn should be your primary objective before setting up the outcomes or the objectives. Two, write SMART objectives. This is not your first time to encounter SMART. A goal or objective confirms the reason for learning and communicates the focus of the module. So, the goal should specify the skills, knowledge, or benefits the learner will gain. So, of course, it has to be specific, measurable. I will go into the details later. But 
when you prepare the modules, review Bloom's taxonomy. Because sometimes we forget that. Whenever I look at the objectives prepared by some teachers, by some educators, I would always question that from the very beginning until the end, if there are five objectives, it's just gain understanding. Is that really what we want our students to just get from us? Just to gain understanding from the lessons that we are preparing? Or we want them to get more? At our university, we always say in our guidelines, in our uh, policy, you have to come up with it is possible for two lower order thinking skills like you remember, you recall. These are lower order thinking skills. And then three objectives should be higher order thinking skills. You analyze, you evaluate, you apply, you build, you make, you create. So this has to be. You have to be very careful. Your aim is not only your students to understand. Your aim when you make your module is for your students to understand, for your students to critically analyze, for your students to evaluate, and for your students to apply what they've learned. So these are the things that should be in your head. And of course, as I've said, you have to consider the mandates and the policies of the school where you are working because there is, or the national mandates of the Department of Education are probably CMO uh, from the Commission on uh, from the Commission on Higher Education and from the Department of Education. I mean, OK, so smart for best results. Think smart. OK, specific. You know this. The learner knows exactly what they will learn or do at the end of the module. So always have beginning with the end in mind. When you prepare your objectives, your learner should know what they will learn or do at the end of the module. So that they know the skills that they need. They can get the necessary skills that they need while they are answering the module or doing the module. So measurable. Learners will use this knowledge consistently. Achievable. The learner will be able to do the task. This is almost always the problem. Achievable. Sometimes when we prepare modules, we are thinking of what we want to achieve. We're not thinking at times what students can do? What are they capable of doing? Are they capable of doing this much or are they capable of doing this much? Relevant, the module will focus on job essential skills and knowledge. And timely, the learner will be able to complete the tasks in a timely manner. Don't ever that. Well, it's a module. They do it at home. No. They're answering tons of modules, not only coming from you. So if you will be thinking that it's OK to give a lot of tasks and activities, you are wrong, sir and mom, because you have to consider that your students are answering tons of modules coming from six subjects or eight subjects. You have to put it in. In our institution again, I'm sorry for saying it again, we have policies laid out for this. The number of tasks, the number of items in the activities that we are giving so that we will be able to help our students. We can help our students in the care model, caring them well so that it will not be very difficult for them. It will not be uh, a horrendous, uh, a very taxing experience for them answering all the modules. Smart goal or goals will motivate the learner by showing them what is in what is in for me or what is in it for me? Step three, create the right type of module. I highlighted it, create the right type of module. Once you have defined the problem and set up your objectives, you are ready to create a module. You are ready to create the right module. I say probably if the right modules were prepared and probably if there was ample time given for teachers to prepare the modules, then probably there are no problems about the modules that are being given to students at this point in time. 
right type of module? How do we define it? Because that would be the question. So what's the right type of module, Bang? It's a question to you as well. What is the right type of module that you're going to prepare? How am I going to answer that? The right type of module for me is that module that would fit the needs of my students. I know I have clear knowledge of my students. That's why when I lay the objectives, I know it's achievable. That when I prepare the objectives, I know that the activities that I will put in there are in line with the objectives. And I know that the activities that I will be given, giving in there are relevant for my students, that they will be getting something from it, that they will be applying something from it, and that when assessments are given, they would be able to do well in the assessment simply because they got all the knowledge, they got all the competencies. And when they will be asked to apply that particular knowledge in real life situation, they will be able to do it. They will be able to apply it. A secret to developing great module is to match the right goals with the learning activities and tasks and the assessments. That's according to Tyler in 1941. Match it. I always have a joke here. Very funny joke. When you are teaching your students, say for example, cookery, if you're teaching your students how to fry an egg or how to cook, how to fry whatever, you will not be assessing them by asking them to prepare PowerPoint presentation on how to prepare an egg. The assessment would be take a video of yourself frying an egg in your homes. That's at this point in time. Well, of course, in normal situations, that would be different. But that's how it should be. It should be aligned all the time. When you get, get used to checking the alignment, there'll be no problem. It will just go on smoothly. Four, four, step four, feedback and revision. Once you're ready, when the first version of the module is ready, it is time to forward the first draft to the subject matter experts or SMEs and stakeholders for feedback, which it was very difficult for us to do at this time. The thing that we could do would be to give it to subject matter experts. That's the thing that we could do. We could ask them to check our subject area coordinators, our heads, our senior faculty. We can ask them to look into that. What with the volume that we needed to prepare at this time, it was very difficult. That's why mistakes are unavoidable or were unavoidable. But if we do it right, if we go through the process of module preparation, which is giving the feedback and having the revision at a time that is very smoothly transitioning, then it will be OK. And do not be surprised if subject matter experts and stakeholders offer a lot of feedback. They will definitely offer a lot of feedback, especially coming from stakeholders. So. It's it's something that is very beautiful. It may be hurting, surprising when you see that these are a lot of comments that you will be getting, but still you will be getting feedback and this feedback will help you. Even if every piece of advice from SMEs and stakeholders were diligently followed, they still have more information to share after viewing the first draft. So always, I get it from one senior faculty who have uh, retired already. She said, no matter how much you try to revise and check, when you prepare the final draft, there will still be lapses. So, step five, ah, the longest. This is something we were not able to do. Pilot testing, run a pilot test, uh, run a pilot with a test audience. We do it 
At De La Salle, we usually do it when we prepare modules intended for our students that we soon develop into, exa uh, into books or uh, learning materials. But here at this point in time, at this time of the pandemic, I do not know if there were some who were able to do pilot testing, but pilot testing is very important. You should run a pilot of a new training or new module before putting it into circulation. Pilot testing training or learning provides an additional layer of review and allows you to see whether or not learners are able to attain the expected performance objectives. You have to select a test audience. And when you select, you don't get the best. Test audience should not have a high level of knowledge on the topic. So you have to gather feedback from your test audience during and after the pilot testing. You have to find out what works best, what needs to be improved. You have to see the gaps that may exist. And you have to work with subject matter experts and stakeholders to come up with ways on how you're going to fill in the gaps and improve the modules. So if you have if you have existing modules at the moment which are not pilot tested or which were not uh, used or which which were used but were not uh, evaluated, it's high time. You can do it. You still have time to do it. Just do some modifications and you have already done it. This is already pilot testing, so you, you should be getting feedback from your students who are using the modules at the moment. So you can get feedback from them. This way you can better the succeeding modules. Step six, you are to create the final version, upload and launch. After you have tied up the loose ends from the pilot, you are ready to create the final version of your content. You can upload it to the LMS and launch. You may also want to provide detailed reporting data. That's I, I think we are doing that at De La Salle uh, after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days of what we are doing with our students. Uh, doing this is a great way to show the modules impact on students learning. We need no matter how negative the feedback would be, it will still help us. Sometimes it will crush our hearts to see the very negative uh, feedback, but still it's a way for us to learn. It's a way for us to pick up the pieces, mend it, sew it, so that we will be able to present and make better in the future. I learned it from my mentors uh, when I was taking my PhD. They say it's okay. It's okay that there will be mistakes, but of course it should not be really that very big that will affect everything. But committing mistakes and lapses is natural because we are humans. Even technology would have lapses. Humans, we are prone to errors, but it does not matter whether you commit mistake in doing the modules or not. What matters the most is how you're going to mend it, how you're going to improve it. Anyway, this is for our students. This is for ourselves, for our own satisfaction, for our all own self-fulfillment. Step seven, ask, evaluate your online modules. Asking the end users, colleagues, and stakeholders to evaluate the module is another great way to improve and polish the modules. Meaning at the end of giving all the modules, you have to evaluate it. You're evaluating it while you're giving it, while it's in progress, but you have, you need to have an overall evaluation at the end. What are the best modules? What are the modules that needs to be improved? What are the modules that can be used as your model? So polish everything so that everything becomes a model for you. How do we do? So I'm, I will be sharing with you the online module planning and preparation at De La Salle University Des Marinas so that you have a first hand idea, first hand idea of how are you going to do it? How is it? So first we began. It was April when we started planning, coming up with groups to prepare policies, our institutional rules and regulations, and we call it the IRRs. 
So we had to lay it down. Everything was there. So we were given two months to prepare, if I'm not mistaken, to prepare all the policies. Policies has to be there to support all the people, all the stakeholders who will be using the platform that we will be doing. So we prepare. So part of our preparation for our curriculum are the online module planning and preparation. So of course we started. How did we begin? How did we plot it? When the IRRs were ready, we had a training. What would be the first one? So we begin with the preparation of the syllabus. So the syllabus would have to be prepared. From the syllabus, we say the second step will be to come up with a module map. Mapping of the module. And then the third, we say we prepare the printed module first before we prepare the online module. So we first prepare the printed module before we prepare the online, mo the online module. The basis of our online module are the printed modules. Why? What's the reason for that? We were saying, we were laughing during the meeting when we say printed modules have to be ready also because we were also considering our students whom, who may consider having home base, do not have internet correct connection or whatsoever. That's one. So there has to be printed module. Printed module that is almost or 95% similar with the online module. Of course, it will totally be different, but at least the content of the printed module must also be the content of what our students are using in the online modules. And second, our second reason is that whatever happens, if there are calamities that would come, uh, the explosion of uh, Taal volcano, typhoons and all, De La Salle University has a ready printed module that whatever happens, it's very easy to send it to our students so that learning continues. That's one of the many essences of care model. Learning continues even if uh, internet technology, even if the environment would not support us, there will still be. That's why we prepared printed module first. I will be sharing with you uh, the printed module later on. So from the syllabus, this is it. So syllabus planning and development process. We have this. In fact, I conducted this in one of the webinars that we had at, the, at De La Salle. So this is the step by step way of doing it that how, how we did it. So we had the syllabus planning and development process. So we have I, we identified the steps. We have the outputs. What are the expected outputs and the people who are in charge? So we made sure everything was in place. So once the syllabus is approved, this is how our syllabus, how our syllabus looks like. So this is our format. OK, then you go to the next part, module planning and development process. So we start it out with module mapping. So we requested for a module map based on the syllabus because the syllabus gives us the all the lessons that the students are going to have. So definitely it will be the guide and the basis for coming up with a module. So the people in charge here, department led by the subject coordinators. So it will be monitored by coordinators and chairs. And then after that, when the map is ready, the printed module will be written. OK, so here based on the learning plans, we have our course learning outcomes and topic learning outcomes. The module map. Here is the module map. Very simple module map that I prepared. It does not necessarily have to be something that is very taxing. When I share this with them, it does not necessarily have to be in detail. With the time given you, this is enough. So I prepared a module for English for specific purposes for ESP. So for the midterm, the map, there are one, two, three, four, four modules. For the final term, there are two modules, module five and module six. This is the sample. You can do it, I'm sure. And then printed module. So the start of the preparation of the printed module. So the printed module, as I've said, you go back to what I have discussed. Uh, the printed module is like 
you have to be thinking that it is intended for your students, so your module must be speaking to your students. It's speaking to your students, giving all the important parts that your institution would have to agree on. Because with us at De La Salle, our modules are composed of four important parts. What are this? Beginning from the learning outcomes, we have that. You have to identify the learning outcomes. Where do we, how do we prepare the learning outcomes? Of course, the syllabus would be the guide to come up with the learning outcomes in, this, in the printed module. The second part is our learning learning objectives, as I have said, and then learning process. So how are the students going to learn from it? What's the process? So you begin from your springboard, from your, motiva from your motivation, you have your discussion, and then we have learning activities. So what are the activities that the students are going to come up with? And then our last part are assessments. We have enabling assessments and we have summative assessments. We have summative assessments, midterm and final term. We try to divide it. We're giving two summative assessments for the midterm, another two summative assessments in the final term. So we have numbers. We identify number of items for students and we have also identified the hours the time allotted for every assessment for our students to do and for our teachers to prepare. So there are specific numbers from our uh, care model IRR. So how, how many? So students know that from the very beginning. Our students know that, okay, there are two summative assessments which will be given. For summative assessments, we'll have 50, I think. I hope I'm right. And then another, uh, another summative assessment, part two, at the latter part, we'll also have another 50 for a total of 100 points for the assessment for the midterm and another 100 points divided into two times or two schedules of summative assessments in the final term. Even the activities that we put in there, it must be something that is doable for our students, like 30 items for every, for every activity, for every module. There has to be number of items that has to be indicated, something that is doable and achievable for the students. Are they or will they be able to answer this? considering the time frame or the time given for that particular subject. So that's it. When the printed module is ready, that's the time that they will be preparing online module. I will be sharing with you the online module. OK, let me discuss how I prepared one sample online module. What are the components? What are the compositions of this online module that I personally prepared and I shared with our university? So the first part that I prepared, of course, there's PowerPoint presentation. May I repeat PowerPoint presentation, uploading PowerPoint presentation or giving PowerPoint presentation in your LMS is not a module. It's just a part. It's part of your discussion of the module. But you have to be sure that at every beginning of a module that you will prepare in your LMS, the objectives or the learning objectives are there. So that the moment your students open the, the learning management system of your university, they can see what are the learning outcomes? What are the things expected of me at the end of the module? And then your discussion is there at your PowerPoint presentation. And then your assessments. Your assessments have to be uploaded as well in your LMS. In what I will be showing you, I prepared a video, a video discussion that gave all instructions as well to the students. So the syllabus that I have here, the sample syllabus, the sample module map, this is also the sample of the video that I prepared. So let me share it with you. So let me play this. This is just for eight minutes and 48 seconds. 
So this is the module that I prepared. Please don't laugh at it. I am not an expert. I just ask the help. This is my idea of a part of a module, part of the discussion of the module and the giving of instructions. So I hope you get something from it. Let me play it. Our discussion for today will be focused on assessment and evaluation. And while you're going through the module, you are expected to write a brief reflection about the gospel. You are to answer the motivation question. You are to explain the difference between assessment and evaluation. You are to modify an assessment tool. You are to assess the lesson plans prepared in class. And you are to evaluate our class, English 144, during the midterm period. But before anything else, we have to pray first. Let us put ourselves in the spirit of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the book of St. Matthew. The mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command these two sons of mine sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. Lord, our loving Father, we thank you for giving us this day, for the opportunity of learning about assessment and evaluation. May the learning that we will get for today help us to become better evaluators of ourselves, for us to become better mentors, better Christians. Amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. All right. So. I think uh, it stopped sharing, sir. Yes, I'm being, I think so, yes. Let me go back to it. I'm really very sorry. I think it's a technical problem. My internet connection, I think, is having difficulty at the moment. Uh, let me go back and uh, share it. Yes, please. Thank you. So while while we are waiting for the video, we would like to um, remind our participants that right after the presentation of Mambeng, we'll be having our question and answer portion. So if you have some question, kindly post it now in our live chat. Thank you, Mambeng. Yes, sir. I think I'm having problems. Really, I do not okay. know. Uh, let me check it. I'm really I really apologize because in my screen I could see it is sharing. But I do not know why it is not. So my screen is not shared or it is shared, sir. Because um, I could see the basis of my screen. What we can, what I can see is um, the slide which uh, written uh, task two. Why do we need to evaluate or give assessment okay. at all times? The video is not playing, sir. OK, oh. I will go back to it. Uh, let me unshare and let me share it again. We are um, glad and thankful to our participants. So right now we are receiving um, good comments and um, greetings from our participants here. We also have some questions. Thank you for sending your questions. And um, to the other participants who wish to join our Q&A right after the presentation of Dr. Bing, please post your questions in our live event chat. Right now we have 96 attendees and we are so thankful for our participants for joining us this afternoon. This is the second series of the webinars that we are conducting.
Sir, I I think I'm really having a hard time sharing uh, sharing uh, the whole thing. Um, let me try it one more time. Sure, sure, Pop. Sure, Miss uh, Sure, Ma'am. Mm. Sure. Earlier so, we sir, yes yes ma'am please go just go ahead. Yeah, sir. Can you see it now? My screen. Yes, yes, we can okay. see your screen so now. Again, our discussion for today yeah. will be focused okay. on assessment and evaluation. And while you're going through the module, you are expected to write a brief reflection about the gospel. You are to answer the motivation question. You're to explain the difference between assessment and evaluation. You are to modify an assessment tool. You are to assess the lesson plans prepared in class. And you are to evaluate our class, English 144, during the midterm period. But before anything else, we have to pray first. Let us put ourselves in the spirit of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the book of St. Matthew. The mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink? Drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. Lord, our loving Father, we thank you for giving us this day, for the opportunity of learning about assessment and evaluation. May the learning that we will get for today help us to become better evaluators of ourselves, for us to become better mentors and better Christians. Amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. All right, so our first task you're going to write a brief reflection about the gospel that we just read. It is for five points. Uh, instructions on how you're going to do this will be discussed in the latter part of the module. And then, here we go. You have your task too. Are you not wondering why we always need to evaluate and give assessments to our students? I guess sometimes it would be worthwhile to sit and ask ourselves, why do we need to evaluate or give assessments to our students and sometimes to all the things that we do at all times? So this is for 10 points and you will be graded according to clarity of points that you will be presenting for five points, organization of your thoughts for another five points. So it will be a, to a total of 10 points for this task. Now let's continue. Let's take a look at this picture. It simply tells us the purpose of assessment and evaluation. The picture here shows that assessment is to increase the quality. You see a man watering the plants. So assessment is to increase the quality, whereas evaluation is to judge the quality so it's the same as looking at it looking at the plant that the man was watering a while ago and now when you evaluate you are to judge the quality of that particular plant and that is evaluation now to make it clear let's try to take a look at the table so an assessment is a measurement tool whereas an evaluation is a judgment tool. An assessment is non-judgmental, whereas evaluation applied against standards. An assessment is ongoing, whereas an evaluation is summative. An assessment answers the question or the questions, how much did they learn? How well did they learn it? How well was it thought? Whereas an evaluation determines to what objectives are achieved. Assessment and course evaluation are two important stages in ESP teaching process. 
Hypothetically, an ESP course is supposed to be successful. It is set up to fulfill particular learners' needs and enable them to perform specific things with language. Normally, ESP course has specified objectives which have to be assessed and measured in terms of how well these objectives have been provided and served. Targeting at helping the ESP practitioners and achieving these stages, Hutchinson and Waters in 1987 proposed a complementary procedure based on two levels. The first level is learner assessment. This procedure's main task is to measure the learner's performance and level of proficiency. In other words, what they actually know in terms of language knowledge at this level of the course achievement. Assessment also elicits learners' linguistic problems and difficulties and sets other views for pedagogical solutions in the next courses. And the second one is course evaluation. ESP course itself needs to be evaluated whether the sets of objectives designed were achieved or not to reach the course aims. Both learner assessment and course evaluation facilitate and help in providing the teachers with feedback on the efficiency of the course, the teaching methods and materials, and the improvement of the necessary revisions in the ESP course design. Put this in your head. Assessment and evaluation are both helpful to us teachers. They help us assess and evaluate ourselves as well if we have become helpful mentors to our students. Now, off you go with task three. Based on the available assessment samples online, you are going to choose one assessment tool that you think can effectively assess the lesson plan you have prepared in our previous lesson. You are to modify the tool together with a partner. So I'm sure you've got your partner already. So you are to submit the original assessment and your modified assessment, meaning the tool that you got and the modified one, you're going to submit it. You will use the one that you have modified in assessing yours and your partner's lesson plan. You are to submit the result of your assessment as well. Your task four. We are almost done with the midterm period. Please make an evaluation of our class based on the following. So based on readiness, it is the instructor, instructor's pedagogical and technical preparedness to teach our course. Am I prepared to teach you? And then rigor. It is the instructor's adherence to high standards and quality in academic excellence. And then instructional materials. The alignment of instructional materials, course objectives, and the delivery mode. Are all of this aligned? Are you getting competencies that you need? And then assessment. It's the alignment of assessment tools, course objectives, and delivery mode. And then support. The availability of technology resources and assistance for instructor and student success. Was it easy for you to access all of this at the school book? Was it easy for you to communicate with me? Are there people? in at de la Salle who helps you with technical support and then student learning experience the attention to students interest and needs by providing opportunities for interaction engagement and deep learning this is for 30 points and then this is how you're going to do it so this is how i want it to look this is the format so you're going to use short bond paper you're going to computerize it so short bond paper, when you are going to type it at the MS Word format, the font size is 12 and Times New Roman. So you're going to send it at the assessment open for this. Okay, here is the other one where you're going to do it, how you are going to do it. And here are our references. So good luck and happy writing to all of you. Okay. So that's it. I hope uh, you got something from it. And uh, this, th that particular uh, module that I prepared was together with the other things that I have mentioned a while ago. That was intended for my EDUC students, my graduating EDUC students. That's why I call them my fellow teachers. And to leave uh, my, my line to leave with each and every one of you before I end is just uh, my thought that maybe, just maybe, 
if online modules or modules were prepared well, those because there are students who are crying at this point in time, they cry for the suspension of online learning. Parents are cry crying for the suspension of online learning simply because it all boils down into that particular issue of modules that were prepared, that were rapidly prepared. But I want to also inspire all of you. It is never too late to improve whatever we have all prepared. So happy teaching po. I hope you learned something from me. Uh, maraming maraming salamat. Animo po. And good afternoon. Thank you so much, Ma'am Beng. Indeed, that was very informative, and I'm sure we have learned a lot from that presentation. And of course, we also like to thank Sir Roland. Sir Roland, thank you for that engaging Kahoot activity a while ago. Thank you, Ma'am Beng. Thank you, Sir Roland. So at this point, um, we'll now have the Q&A portion. So let us now welcome back Miss Grace. Um, our uh, moderator for the Q&A. Hi, Ms. Grace. Hello, Sir Noel. And thank you, Ma'am Beng. Thank you, Ma'am Beng, for that very informative presentation. So, uh, Ma'am Beng will answer some questions that were sent to us during the presentation. Sir Noel, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Ms. Grace, please proceed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The first question is from Ms. Janelle Mendoza, and uh, here's her question. What is the ideal number of activities to our students per semester? Ma'am Beng? Okay. Uh, opo, I, I read that, Ma'am Grace. Uh, Ma'am Janelle, hello, good afternoon po. If you're going to ask me, uh, what's the ideal number of activities to be given to our students per semester? Mahirap, it's not diffi it's, it's difficult to count the number of activities per one whole semester. Uh, I would suggest, based on experience, it would be better po activities per module. We count per module, not per semester. Because if we say, we're going to give, I can tell you, okay, give your students or you decide as 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 a group, as a department, you decide 15 activities. I believe so that there it may be lacking uh, when you are preparing the modules already because there are modules that needs a lot of activities, engaging activities for students. There may be modules or topics that would require you little activities for, uh, for that particular topic. So it's very difficult to determine the number of modules per semester. Uh, I would never or I would not suggest any number of activities per semester. I would rather suggest the number of activities per module. And the ideal, and that's what we are having here at the university at De La Salle, we're having at least three activities per module. And what I have said a while ago, it would be best according to some experts in terms of module writing that the activities that we prepare for the module would be starting from easy, average, and difficult so that all students are given the opportunity to fare well and to give to get nice scores and get the competencies that they need. I hope I am able to answer your question, Ma'am Janelle. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Ma Beng. And we have several questions from Sir Art. So let me read the first question. How do, uh, how can stakeholders help in the planning and preparation of the online module? So that's the first question from Sir Art. Hello, Sir Art. Good afternoon, Po. How do we stakeholders help in the planning? Uh, as far as I remember, stakeholders give their feedback as being part of the end users. But as to the planning, ito po yung role. This is the role of the stakeholders. Once the modules are prepared by the teachers, because of course the educators are the ones preparing the modules, once it has been shown to you, to the stakeholders, parents, administrators, uh, students, uh, people in the community or people in the school, then I guess that's the time that you can start helping by giving your feedback. Po. Your feedback as to how you feel. Say, for example, you're, you're a parent. 
being a stakeholder as a parent, you can give your feedback when the modules are shared to you for evaluation or preliminary assessment. So you can give your comments, your suggestions as to how it could be better by the teacher or by the group of teachers who have prepared the module. So that's how stakeholders could help. If you are a stakeholder in terms of uh, the field, you're one of uh, in the particularly in the business or you're in the field, you can probably help when you are asked to evaluate to give suggestions as to how the competencies in the module could be applied by the students in the field. So something to that effect. I hope I am able to answer your question. Paul. Uh, I think your second question as a request. question from Sir Art. Uh -huh. OK, um, this is another question from Sir Art. How can you uh, what can you say about the prepared online module or the module papers from the Department of Education? What can we? I'm sorry, ma'am. I was not able to get it clearly. OK, sorry. Po. Uh, this is um, the second question, ma'am, coming from Sir Art. What can you say about the prepared online module or the module papers from the Department of Education? Ah, OK, so let me be very safe, Sir Art. <laughs> I have to be very safe. Po. <laughs> Sabi lang di, sir, buti na lang din po. The question of Sir Art is very safe. What can I say? Number one. It has been prepared or it was prepared with so much hard work coming from all the teachers. And I'd like to commend all DepEd teachers for preparing the modules given the very short period of time and given the so much struggles and challenges upon them. I totally salute them. With the output of the modules that has become an issue right now, it has started from the beginning of the school year and it haunts all of us because of the so many problems and lapses of the module. I say, as I have said a while ago, sir, that's the problem when there is not enough time to evaluate the modules before it is given. I believe so they went through evaluation, but probably the pilot testing of these modules were not done because had it been done, if there was pilot testing or if there were pilot testing of these modules, probably all these problems that we are encountering or public schools are encountering right now could have not been encountered. We cannot. Uh, we cannot say it's their fault or it's the fault of the teachers. No one is to be blamed for this. We are all victims of the situation. And probably we simply have to be resilient at this point in time. Correct what is needed to be corrected. That when the teachers take hold of the module from the national level, check all the parts of it, prepare the corrections before they give it to the students or to the parents so that at least the parents and the students are ready that there are some lapses in the module and continuously apologize because this is something that is unexpected. Yun lang po. Thank you so much, Sir Art. Thank you, Dan Mambeng. Very well said po. And then we have another question this time from uh, Sir Luisito Nakil. Um, his question is, how should we assess learning experiences of students in the virtual space considering possibility of ch cheating in objective type of test? Okay, that's a very nice question. Um, that's reality. That's real. Tanggapin na po natin. It's really real. Cheating, how do we assess cheating? I would say, how can we, I'm asking you now, all of you, can we know whether the students are cheating or not? Do we have our ways to do it? Until now, even in our meetings, as to how we are going to check whether students cheated or not, whenever they're doing asynchronous assessments, it's very difficult for us. There are ways to prevent it, like what others are doing. Like if they're doing assessments, there's a video, they are recorded, students are recorded. This is being done in other countries. I think in China, uh, my Chinese students are sharing with me that there's a camera focused on the test papers of the students and there's or, or the computer of the students and there's a camera focused on the student himself or herself. But 
in the Philippines, if your if, if your question is about here in our country, it will be very difficult, sir. The, the tip that I can give you is to accept that one reality. Accept that our students may be cheating. It's acceptance on our part. We can't be bitter about it. We know and we can doubt for the rest of our lives that when our students submit a very good work, it may be copied from someone, but that's it. What do we do? Do we one by one ask our students and ask, did you cheat? You cheat, oh, etc. With the situation that we have right now, I guess it's just acceptance of what we have at the moment. Constant reminder to our students because I use the ultimate reminder. I always tell good thing I am teaching in the graduate school. I can always tell them we are professionals already. But with the elementary, with the high school, with the senior high school, it is very difficult, sir. And I have not read any possible way to check whether our students cheated or not. It's very difficult to see it in the assessment. The, the, the thing that we can do is probably to pray that everything comes back to normal again. And probably as we go along, there may be studies that would come somewhere along the way that would probably tell us or there may be a program that would help us in the future for us to check whether students are not doing, are, they are not the ones doing the modules. Because even in the meetings that we had last Saturday in the graduate school, asking our students to take the comprehensive exams online, it will always be a question. How do we know whether it is the student answering the comprehensive exam or not? The same way if we translate it to elementary and high school, more so in elementary, in high school, and in the undergrad. But up to this time, sir, I can tell you, my, I have not reached into one reading of any text that would tell me how do we check if our students, how do we check uh, the honesty of our students in terms of cheating. I hope po nasagot ko yung tanong niyo, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Beng. So, um, we will be entertaining one more questions uh, due to limited time. The rest of the questions will be uh, shared to Ma'am Beng and uh, uh, probably our committee can send the answer to the questions that were posted in the chat box. So, let me just read the comments coming from some of our participants before we proceed to the last question. So, these are... Um, uh, the comment. So from Ms. Janelle Mendoza, Mambeng, she mentioned that she got an idea about including the prayer in the presentation. So thank you for this, ma'am. I super appreciated it. And then another comment, uh, this came from Sir Art. Thank you, ma'am, for this webinar and the people behind to, uh, to share this with us. A really good help for us teachers. God bless. And um, uh, this, the, this is the last question. But again, the, the rest of the questions will be shared to Mambeng. So uh, this question came from one of our colleagues in the LSUD, Dr. Jonathan Goichiko. So Mambeng, she would like, uh, Dr. Uh, Jong would like to congratulate you for an, for an enlightening discussion. Okay, this is the question. One concern that module developer encounter is the tension between this is a tested method and the new and current approaches, which ultimately affect module development. May you suggest a theory or model or paradigm that will settle this ten tension? Thank you. Uh, at this point in time, Sir Jong, as I am also attending some of the webinars of uh, some uh, popular friends who are into module development in another country, uh, they are always saying, uh, as I always listen to them, they're always saying that when we design modules, it will still be best to consider the platform designed, uh, the curriculum platform designed by uh, Taba and Tyler, that whenever we prepare modules, since there are still no, uh, no known best platform, it will be the design of Tyler and Taba in developing the curriculum that we translated into coming up with modules that we always have to see to it that whenever we prepare modules, 
we consider the, the important parts of alignment and the very important role of evaluation in terms of uh, the modules that we have prepared. That proper evaluation must be done uh, so that uh, we are ensured that our students are getting from it. So that's it. Uh, that's uh, that's what I can share at the moment, Sir Jung. Thank you so much for the question. Okay, so maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Beng, for answering those questions and for the great presentation. It was indeed a pleasure to have with you with us this afternoon. Sir Well. Yes, Ms. Grace, um, we will now going to present the Certificate of Appreciation. Okay. Uh, Ms. Grace, please proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, again, maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Beng. And on behalf of the organizing team, may I present this certificate to you. De La Salle University Des Marinas would like to give the Certificate of Appreciation to you, Dr. Evelyn R. Obo, for being the resource speaker in the webinar entitled Online Module Planning and Preparation held this 16th day of December 2020 via MS Teams, signed Dr. Marco Saez, Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, and Brother Gus Bucher, FSC, President and Chancellor, DLSED. Maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Beng. Salamat din po. Can you please unmute your mic, sir? Uh, uh. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Okay. All right. So, maraming salamat po muli. Thank you so much, Ma'am Beng. Thank you so much for gracing our afternoon with a very nice presentation. Very informative indeed. Maraming salamat din po to all our participating schools, state, city, colleges, and universities, and private higher education institutions for joining us this afternoon. Maraming salamat po. And of course, you would like to thank um, DepEd and the Commission on Higher Education. On behalf of De La Salle University Das Marinas Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research and the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee would also like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. We'd also like to thank for our adding technical support from the DLSUD Center for Innovative Learning Programs. Thank you, Sir Paul, and to the members of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee headed by Engineer Rizaldi de Almas, Dean College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology, Dr. Pat Alcartado, College, Dean College of Education, and of course, through the guidance of our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez. Thank you very much, sir. Before we finally come to the end of our program, here is a very important announcement. Our upcoming webinar, this marker calendar, will be on January 13th. So that's the third series of our webinar. It's about education technology tool for synchronous session. And of course, you also have the succeeding schedule. So please mark your calendar. And of course, for the feedback form and certificate, so kindly um, follow the instruction log in to our dlsudace.edu20.org go to courses click and roll input the access code this is very important it is blfrqxja please take note of that you can either again go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. If you have encountered any problem about your registration and your e-certificate, this email webinars at dlsud.edu.ph. All right, so that ends our second webinar, our online engagement. Again, thank you very much to all of you for attending this afternoon's engagement. 
And on behalf of the LSU Dasmarinas community, we wish all of you a blessed Christmas and New Year. Let us all live Jesus in our hearts forever. Thank you and see you all next time. Enjoy the rest of the day. Happy holidays.